What is up, Psychedelic Spotlight? It's your boy James here coming at you with a brand new episode of the Psych Business Roundup, a segment where we cover the most important news stories of the past week when it comes to investing in psychedelic medicine. To start, we're going to be looking at MindMed, ticker symbol MNMD, who announced they're planning on launching not just one, but two brand new MDMA clinical trials. The first, to be launched next year, will study the differing effects of three different types of MDMA. First, you got your classical MDMA, also known as racemic MDMA, and then you have the two components that make up classical MDMA, your RMDMA and your SMDMA. Now, based on a little bit of preclinical evidence, MindMed actually believes that RMDMA, so one of the components of classical MDMA, has the same amounts of prosocial and empathy effects as MDMA does. However, it may have fewer negative side effects, such as stimulant activity and neurotoxicity. So, if this is borne out in the human clinical trials, it would make our MDMA a much more suitable candidate for therapy, especially when it comes to repeat dosing. Now, once MindMed has some data from this initial clinical trial, assuming that their thesis that our MDMA is a better candidate than regular MDMA uh, is played out, is validated, then they then plan to move on to a second clinical trial, this time testing treating anxiety using RMDMA in patients with autism. Now, they actually do already have a little bit of evidence from an early stage clinical trial that shows that normal MDMA may be beneficial in treating anxiety in people with autism. So MindMed's goal here is to repeat the findings of this study, but using RMDMA and see if the safety profile is at all improved. If it is, then they will of course move this on to later stage clinical trials. This adds to MindMed's already extensive product pipeline, which is by far the largest of any public company. Next up, we're taking a trip down under to Australia. There, researchers are set to conduct a brand new clinical trial testing treating anxiety with psilocybin. Now this is gonna be a phase two clinical trial that has 72 patients and it will of course be placebo controlled. Now what makes this particular clinical trial so exciting is it is the very first clinical trial that is testing treating anxiety using psilocybin assisted psychotherapy. Now I'm sure most of you guys already know lots of other compounds are currently being used to treat anxiety, the most famous of which is Project Lucy, MindMed's project to treat anxiety using LSD. But what's important here is that we're starting to get multiple different compounds being used to treat the same indication. So we have a pretty good understanding that psychedelics like LSD, like MDMA, like psilocybin are probably good for treating certain mental health conditions, but we don't yet know which compounds are most effective in which particular situations. For example, in treating anxiety, is LSD assisted psychotherapy better or is psilocybin assisted psychotherapy better? Maybe it's MDMA. We just don't know and we need as much data as possible to compare and contrast so we can figure out which regimes are best suited and that way we can help the most people and that is why I am so excited about this new clinical trial. And finally, we're going to be taking a look at my home city of Toronto. Toronto has recently asked the federal government of Canada to allow them to decriminalize all drugs within their jurisdiction. Now, this comes as overdoses in Toronto have doubled in the past year, both fatal and non-fatal overdoses as of August. Now, a lot of people don't actually know this, but Toronto is actually the fourth largest city in North America after only Mexico City, LA, and New York. So if Toronto were to decriminalize all drugs, it would be a really big deal. On top of this, Toronto isn't the only major city in Canada asking the government to allow them to decriminalize drugs in their jurisdiction. Toronto is following in the footsteps of Montreal, Vancouver, and Ottawa. So you can see this really is a pan-Canada-wide effort when it comes to the major cities in this country. Having said all that, our Prime Minister, Mr. Justin Trudeau, isn't too hot on the idea of decriminalization. He's thrown cold water in the past, including in our most recent federal election. Now, despite that, with the opioid crisis and overdose crisis continuing to escalate, I do actually expect the Liberal government to allow these cities to experiment within their own jurisdictions. And I say that because Mr. Trudeau in the past has been open to the idea and talked about how he would allow cities to experiment within their own jurisdictions. So something I can see coming to pass as kind of a compromise 
is having some sort of de facto decriminalization within these major cities, but we just wouldn't call it decriminalization. We'd call it like our four point plan to end the opioid epidemic. And at the end of the day, nobody would ever go to jail for taking drugs, but we wouldn't call it decriminalization. Now, if something like this were to happen, it would have a really big implication for the psychedelics markets because Canada is already a leader when it comes to psychedelic research and any sort of change in the legislative landscape in this country could impact the psychedelic research industry quite a lot. So I do actually expect sometime in the next few years, uh, as more research comes out for this country to eventually end up decriminalizing at least psychedelic drugs, maybe all drugs, but at least psychedelic drugs. And here at the Psychedelic Spotlight and Psychedelic Investor, we're gonna keep a very close eye on this because again, any change in the legislative environment here in Canada would have really big effects on the wider psychedelics market. That's all for today, folks. I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, you already know what to do. Like, subscribe, hug your mom, comment down below, all of that good stuff. And don't forget to go check out psychedelicspotlight.com. They provide lots of great information when it comes to psychedelics, cultural pieces, economic pieces, business pieces, and so, so, so much more. So please go check them out, sign up for the newsletter, get all the news that you need every single week directly to your inbox. And until next week, this is James from The Psychedelic Investor, signing out. Oh,